Welcome to another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. Today we're going to meet Judy LeBlanc and a dog named Stormy. Stormy is a three to four year old Australian Shepherd. We're not sure whether she's a purebred or a mix and she's been adopted from the local shelter. Stormy has quite a laundry list of issues that we're going to be trying to identify and address one at a time today. Stormy also lives with another dog named Lacey who is a three year old German Shepherd and Lacey has a whole bunch of issues all to herself. So it's a complicated situation and that both dogs have issues and they're exacerbating each other. So let's go in, meet Judy, see the dogs, and find out what all the issues are. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can probably help. So let's go over all of the, his issues, and then I want to prioritize them so we'll know which ones to address. Uh, <laughs> is that because there's so many? <laughs> the way he goes after Lacey, that okay. really is upsetting to me, and to Lacey. Okay. Although she's a smart dog, she's getting to the place where you know, she'll back away mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than hang around and be bitten by him. So the redirection happens when? Whenever he's notices something and then she notices and she starts doing the same thing that he's doing. So it's at the window primarily? It can be anywhere. Okay. So where It'll else would be it at happen? The window. It, it can happen over there. Lacey will be in the chair over there. That's mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. chair that they've taken over. And whenever, uh, whenever it starts there, he'll go after her there. Okay. I think that's why she's learned to run up the stairs. So, and one of the um oh biting uh he nipped at the mailman mailman okay yeah. and that was when we were all outside i think by himself he, he barks but he, he doesn't nip and i don't think uh if we're not there that he wouldn't be anything but friendly but when so we're was, around was this out here on your front yeah, porch the mailman right comes up to deliver the mail? Mm -hmm. Is that what happens? Yep. Okay. And was Lacey around at the same time? Yep. Okay. And so were, were they kind of just hanging out? Can you describe for me what they were doing? They were barking. Okay. <laughs> and carrying okay. on like they do when somebody comes to the okay. house. And if I remember right, you said that the mailman was just standing. He wasn't, he hadn't turned to walk away or no, anything I don't, at that point. I don't think so. Okay. I can no longer give them bones or rawhide or anything to play with because he will not concentrate on his. He goes over and he takes Lacey's. Okay. And it, it happens all the time. It used to happen all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't do it anymore. I put Lacey in the kitchen mm -hmm. and I put the baby gate up and I put her in there with the rawhide or a bone and I left him out here. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't touch his. He went to that gate and he stood and he barked and he barked and he barked and he finally jumped over the gate to get at what she had. And then did they fight about it? Does she? Oh just yeah, he would fight. <laughs> or does Lacey just give it up? Well, yeah, she pretty much gives it up. Okay. But you know, when he comes at her and he's barking and yeah, mm -hmm. she's smart enough to know <laughs> to just leave it. And if uh, if he get something that I don't want him to have. Such as? I had a stuffed toy upstairs, which he brought down from upstairs, and we don't go upstairs that much. Uh, I, want, I got behind him to take it away from him, and uh, that was one example. He bit at me. Okay. Uh, so you came, he was laying down, say the way he is, and you walked from behind towards him. Right. And what did, what did he, did he steal something? What did he have? I don't remember if it was that stuff or something else, if he got something off the counter. It doesn't matter. If it's something that he has that he shouldn't have or that I don't want him to have, I can't get it away from him without his growling and, and, and snapping okay. at me. And did he, um, did he actually bite you at that time? One time he did. Okay. 
And where did he bite you? He got me on the thigh. Okay. Uh, the way he did it, it was as if he could have done a lot more harm, but he was just letting me know that I shouldn't be doing that to him. <laughs> I should let him have mm -hmm. it. And what, uh, did you have bruising? Did you have puncture wounds? I had bruise. Okay. Uh, is he a counter surfer? If this, yes, okay. he will. In fact, I have seen him with his paws up on the counter whenever there's been nothing there. Mm -hmm. But he's just checking it out just mm -hmm. in case I forgot okay. to put something away. Uh, what are some of the other items that he has stolen that you can remember? Mm -hmm. I mean, if he takes things the, from the counter, or does he take things from the trash? If there's something interesting in the trash, okay. that's why uh, I will move it out into the back hall. Mm -hmm. And why I say he's so intelligent, all my dogs have gone up and down the back staircase with me. Mm -hmm. But he's the only one that has ever gone upstairs, across the house, and down the back <laughs> staircase to get into the back hall and get And that's garbage. where the trash is. Okay. Yeah. And there's a door at the bottom of this uh, stairway, mm -hmm. which I keep closed, but it's, you know, the house is over 100 years old. It doesn't tight, uh, right. close tightly. Right. And he goes down, he pushes it open. Okay. So what, um, if Stormy were to steal something now, how would you handle that situation? Same way. Okay. I just go up behind him. Mm -hmm. No. You know. mm -hmm. Let's see. He got something. I guess it wasn't very interesting. He had something today. Mm -hmm. And I managed to get it away from him mm -hmm. without his okay. biting at me. Or okay. even growling. So there was no reaction today. And Not what was that much. thing? Just something that he'd taken out of the garbage. Maybe, uh, I don't remember, some paper. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. It might have had some. Either that or it wasn't very interesting and he really didn't care about it. <laughs> right. And how about um, his behavior with the cats? I know you said you had asked about that at the time of adoption. He will kind of go after the, mm -hmm. particularly so the other cat. Okay. This one not so much, but this one I think doesn't seem to be. She'll stand up to him more mm -hmm. than the other cat will. Mm -hmm. uh, but he cornered, both he and Lacey cornered uh, the other cat. Okay. And it, the cat started really crying. And, and who's the, the tan cat is who? What's her Kitty kid? cat. So is this pretty typical that they come wandering around when you're out here or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Stormy's not paying any much attention at the moment, but. At the moment. Mm. Oh, yeah. I spoke there to you. There <laughs> you don't chase the cat. Knock it off. I was told to try to get Okay. Lace is up there barking. Mm-hmm. Now he's so, over there in the window barking. Right. So what, what would you normally do when they do this? Do you do After, anything? Yeah, I'll say knock it off. Quiet. Quiet. Okay. And sometimes they actually quiet down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the issues that I have um, are the, is the primary issue that he she, he's redirecting to Lacey, the other dog. Yeah. And has he ever, ever done damage to her? Has he ever bitten her, or is he just in her face? Uh, I'm not really sure. I think maybe he's nipped at her. Okay. But there's Because of the yelping that I've heard, but I've okay. never seen him draw blood. Okay. Um, there's the nipping at the mailman that happened once, mm -hmm. and is that your second, would you say that's the second top priority, or is the, uh, I mean, he's bitten you too, so. Yeah, he needs to learn that he can't bite anybody. Right, <laughs> but they're different issues. The, the, right. What he bit you over is what, is what we call resource guarding when he has okay. an object. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to matter to, from the dog's perspective, it's an object of high value, mm -hmm. and he's going to guard it from either you or Lacey. Some dogs just guard from other dogs. Some dogs guard from cats, dogs, and people, and he's clearly mm -hmm. guarding from you, people. And it sounds like he's 
possessive with items when there's another dog around. He can't just chew his item. He has to go and get mm -hmm. whatever Lacey has. Oh, and yeah. then there'll be a conflict over that if, if, yeah. if uh, Lacey didn't um, let him have it. Okay. Whenever the whites of their eyes turn red, is that something that happens whenever they're really into? Yeah, they can be. I mean, and you don't normally see the whites of dogs' eyes. So if you see the whites of their eyes, it's something that we sort of call a whale eye when they're really stressed and their eye is wide open. Well, I've seen the whites of his eyes lots of times, but I've mm -hmm. seen the whites of his eyes when they've been red. Mm -hmm. And that... Uh, I'd never seen that. And was it after any particular incident or anything that Yeah, happened? it had to do with, uh, I think, when he was going after the cat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we've got five issues. Some of them are related and some of them are not. You know, in terms of the what we're going to do will be the same. Um, and I just want to check in with, you've had them for four months. You've mm -hmm. got five issues where some people... Um, you know, some people want to work on behaviors for a month or two months or some length of time. Are you, where are you with even keeping him? That's what I want to know. Are you, we're going to work with him? Do you want to return him? No, I wouldn't return him to the Humane Society. Okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, have all his issues just, you know, no, magically Go away, cleared sure. Up. sure. <laughs> but, uh, I think he almost should be an only dog, and I think because he's so intelligent that if I knew some place to give him where he could be trained to do mm -hmm. something like sniffing out drugs or mm -hmm. uh, in, incendiary, uh, right, right, that that would be what would make him the happiest, because right. I think he really would like to have something to do with himself. Yes. Well, it's excellent that you've recognized that because Australian Shepherds, any most of the herding breeds, Border Collies, Australian Shepherds, cattle dogs, they need a job to do. I mean, yeah. every dog was bred with something in mind. Right. Labradors, retrievers are retrievers. They're bred to, you know, run through the brambles and the ice and the cold mm -hmm. and catch a duck or whatever and bring it back. Yeah. And, uh, and so he's... He's jobless, <laughs> right? In exactly. Essence. And so he's going to create jobs uh, <laughs> right. for himself that may not necessarily be the proper with, job right, in a house what, like with this. What you're looking for, <laughs> exactly. Um, now, a three to four year old dog, you know, if you were going to pursue this on your own, I would start with the Aus Australian Shepherd Rescue. There must be one around that you know that might be able to rehome him to an only home. I think that. Um, there's going to be a great deal of management on your part with him so that the first thing that needs to happen is he needs to stop practicing all these behaviors. Mm -hmm. He needs to stop practicing the barking at the window and the redirecting to Lacey. Okay, so, you know, Lacey is a fearful, yeah. um, insecure, lacking right. confident dog. Right. Um, you know, when... If I get up and move towards her, or if anybody does, she's just going to run away. Yeah. And I'd rather her run away. You've oh, me her, too. You've had her since August, September, October, November, December, January, February. So you've had her about six months. Yeah. There is also a concern for what Lacey is learning by Stormy's redirection. Yeah. I mean, it's not, you know, if you had two children and one was constantly getting beaten up by the right. other one, when the time comes and she doesn't want to deal with that anymore, mm -hmm. you may end up with a big dog fight because she may at some point decide enough is enough. Okay, so we need we need to keep that in the back of your mind um, because she has enough issues of her own. She doesn't, he, you know, and we're adding to them yeah, because right. he's bullying because, her. Yeah. He's, you know, picking up, he's picking on her. She can't have two items. Her life is completely changed. Right. Not necessarily for the better right. because of dog number two. Right. Okay. Um... So the first thing that has to happen is the behavior has to, he, he has to stop practicing it. Mm -hmm. So when we came in, you said, oh, 3 o'clock will get pretty exciting around here. The school buses will come by and he'll start doing his thing. From now on, when 3 o'clock comes around, he should have a leash and collar on and be lying down with you doing something completely different. Oh. Okay, he's not going to be censoring at the window. 
we're not going to worry about Lacey at this point. She, she may bark, so hang on. <laughs> so, whatever it is. And does Stormy have any behaviors? I know you did a few of the one hour clinics that the shelter had. Sit. Uh, sit. No, I did the, uh, what, the walk sit. nicely, big deal. Sit. And what was the other one? Stormy. Sit. So here's the first thing. Whatever, I'm not, you know, you can only train one dog at a time, so Lacey's just going to have to sort of cope. Lacey, quiet. At the known times when you know there's going to be a lot of activity outside, he needs to be doing something else. And that can be on a leash with you. If you're sitting, he can be sitting with you. Um, did he come, did you have a crate for him at any particular time? No crate. I've never had a crate for any of my dogs. Okay. Um, a crate would be helpful in that when the behavior, if, if you can't prevent the behavior and he's at the window with his leash, mm -hmm. okay, he has to have the leash, because if he's in full reactivity mode at the window, Lacey, then, <laughs> Lacey, then if you come no. in and grab his collar, I'm not so sure he's not going to redirect onto you, right. that frustration, okay? So that's why he's going to need the leash on, so that if you, you know, you miss or whatever, you're in the kitchen, he comes racing out here, you're going to come out here, you're going to take him by the leash and bring him back to wherever you are and ask him to lie down. Does he have sits and downs? I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll find out. I know he, I think you have he, a sit. he sits up on his hind legs. Sits so. pretty. Okay. Yeah. So um, now I know you did the one-hour classes. Yeah, that's all. Yep. And with your adoption, did you get, was, was taking a class a part of the fee that you paid for adoption for him? No, probably because maybe because he was older. Okay. Well, it might be worthwhile taking um, an everyday canine essential class, but I'm going to show you some of the things that they do in class anyway. Okay. Stormy has five different issues. The issue, the primary issue that's causing the most problems at the moment is her barking at the windows, and then what she does is she redirects to Lacey, the other dog. And a redirection is when a dog is very frustrated, can't get to what they want to get to, so they sort of take it out on the other dog. And one of the concerns with Stormy is that I don't want her to redirect to Judy. So if Judy does something to intervene, which I'm going to have her do, we want to be sure that Judy is safe and does not get Stormy's frustration redirected onto her. So we're going to work on that by the window, and we're going to do some body blocking. We're going to do a lot of management with a leash and collar so that Judy can just take her away from the situation. With any behavior that we're trying to change, one of the first things that has to happen is the behavior has to stop, and that's usually management. The behavior has to be managed so the dog can no longer practice that behavior. So let's take a look and see what we can get accomplished today. So let's say that Stormy is here by the window. And I'm going to put some treats here to guarantee that he's going to stay there. Barking and carrying on. What I want you to do, Judy, is to come pick up the leash so that, again, you're not going to get redirected on. I don't want him to bite you while you're doing this. And you're going to do something called body blocking. Okay? So dogs communicate by physical space. Physical space is very important to dogs. And we can use that. We can speak their language by body blocking them. So the leash is just to help for, with some control. And what I'm going to do, come here, I'm going to get up. I am going to step into his space this way, and I want him to back up away from me. I want him to yield to my space. Did you have a horseback ride? Come here. So one result is that he might sit. Come here. I know. Stand. But I want him to back up away. Okay? So if he were on your kitchen counters and you can walk in and get in front of him, you can back him up that way. Well, as soon as he sees me coming in, he gets down. Okay. He knows he's not supposed to be up there. Right, right. And when you're there, that's enough. Yeah. Um, when he's in the full barking at the window, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think it, I don't know if it's going to be safe for you to body block at that time. Right, when he's in the full, yeah. right. he's already redirecting to Lacey. Right. And then if you insert your body at that point, I don't want him to go after you. 
Mm -hmm. So that's why the leash is going to have to ha be on. You can get a shorter one or a narrower one if you need to. So that you can pull them away and you can get in there and tell them to knock it off. Okay? Now, the other thing is, you know, Australian Shepherd, he, he's going to have to have some sort of a job. <laughs> right? Yeah. So we'll talk about that. He also needs to know more English. She needs more English, too. She's, <laughs> she is so nervous and so afraid. Yeah. That she's living in this constant state, I mean, at least while we're here, this constant state of anxiety. She's getting you, more anxious since I got him. Yeah, because he's not helping her. Right. <laughs> and that's why I wanted another dog, because I've always had two dogs. And right. they've always been great right. together. Right. So. And sometimes, sometimes a confident dog can help the less confident dog. But... He's got he's a his bully. Own, he, well, yes, he's a bully, and he has his, he's comes with his own suitcases that aren't helping her suitcases. You know what I mean? The baggage. Right, right. right. Um, but her okay. level of anxiety is pretty extreme. It's because of the pacing, mm -hmm. she won't be in the same room, um, and then his whole barking thing just feeds into that. So, so they both need more English. And the things I'm going to show you to do with him, you can certainly do with her as well. Just having her have a basic sit on command, a lie down on command, um, a leave it command might help get him away from the window. But what happens is, let me see, if we can get him, I'll just talk about Stormy at the moment. If we can get Stormy trained to understand some English, mm -hmm. then he can start to function more from what I call the front of his brain, his operant brain. Okay. Where now he and Lacey are spending way too much time at like their brainstem in sort of doggy world, rah, 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 rah. react, 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 react. Okay, and they're not ever focused functioning from oh, you want me to do something? Oh, there's consequences. Oh, I get paid off good things when I sit, when I lay down, when I come away from the window, I get mm -hmm. big payoffs. Okay, so and that's going to take time. That's not going to happen overnight. Okay. Um, so that would be basically the idea behind giving him goodies whenever he comes in. Yes, and that only works if coming in is of higher value than staying out. But if he wants to stay out, if there's more motivation for him to stay out than, than coming in, then let's say you're offering a milk bone, you might have to go up to a piece of roast beef to get him to come in. <laughs> You know what I mean? If the roast beef will be a higher value yeah. than right. whatever's outside. Right. So if he's chasing squirrels outside and a squirrel is $100 to him, mm -hmm. you're going to need $150 or $200 to get him to come in. Does that this make sense? This morning, for the first time, uh, usually they go out and they come right back in because mm -hmm. they know they'll get something. It took him about a half hour before he came in this morning. Mm -hmm. He was just standing in the corner. I don't know what it was down the street that mm -hmm. he was... Right. Waiting for, right. He would not in, come in, in some regards, you've got a perfect setup here. You have a nice tall fence. It's fenced all the way around, yeah. right? So the dogs can go right. out and have some lots of freedom. Right. The 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 unfortunate part for a dog like Stormy and maybe even Lacey is that on two sides it's streets, <laughs> so there's a lot of activity. It's not like you're out in the country. Yeah. So for a reactive dog, that's already right, 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 right. Somebody mm -hmm. walks by and, oh, let's chase him down the side of the fence. And the car goes by, let's chase the car back up the side of the fence. You know, so he's out there sort of exercising himself, but, but again, yeah. not necessarily in the way we want him to. So what I'm doing now is since Stormy lay down on his own, I'm reinforcing. I'm going to pay him for laying down and being quiet while we're talking. Okay, I don't want to ignore the good behavior that we've had. Okay. So body blocking, I'm going to, I want, <laughs> he, he came with that, right? Yes, he Is did. It pretty? He did. <laughs> it looks like it's worked for you quite well there. Huh? Okay, so I want you to take the leash, and I want you just to practice body blocking him. And I'm just going to ignore him because I have some treats with me. So walk into him. Yes, more, more. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. So we're adding, we, by stepping into his space, we add a little pressure to him. And I'm, going to, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to have you stand right over here. And so if I walk up to you like this, uh -huh. what do you want to do? Do you want to back up? Do you want to back up? Yeah, I guess I would. Right, right, because I'm putting pressure, right, by coming into your space. Yeah. And that's exactly what we want to do to the dog, is put pressure on him by coming into his space. 
Does that make sense? So it's not yeah. it's not like I'm standing here doing this to you, which yeah. is like, why is she doing that? But I but I'm not applying any pressure to you. Mm -hmm. But when I do this, there's pressure. Okay. So that's that's how we do it. The same thing with dogs. We keep our feet <coughs> toe to toe with theirs as much as possible. With him, I'm going to keep the leash on. Now, if he's sitting, it's going to be harder to do it. So it's going to be an easier exercise when he's standing at the window or standing in some place and you need to move him. Okay? So in general, you are not going to walk around him. He is going ever. to move ever. Right? You said it. He has to move for you. Okay? When we were sitting in the other room and he started to push, come in towards us, I just kept putting my foot up. Mm -hmm. I didn't want him in that space. That's my space. And it was your space because we were talking. So I just put my foot up to say, you know what, stay out of the space. Okay. And to a herding breed, space is very important. Very important. So he'll, he will, he'll test you in ways that might be he doesn't comply right away or you have to ask him more than once until he understands it's always going to be this way. Like you said, when, you, when he first came, he always wanted to get on your bed, and you mm -hmm. said no. And you kept taking him off, and kept taking him off, and you were very consistent, it sounds yeah. like, and he doesn't get on the bed anymore. Right. right. And I'm just going to knock on your door and see if, let's have you stand over there so we can do his. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to take the leash, and I'd ask him to sit. I'm also going to ask him to lie down. Down. Good boy. Okay, Lacey. You'll be the right. next session, Lacey. Sit. Lacey. Down. Good boy. And I'm going to step on it so he can't you get up. <laughs> She's like, Lacey, usually somebody comes no. in when we do this. Down. Good boy. So we try to get up, but I'm standing on the leash, so he has to stay down. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good boy. You don't always have to have treats for that. Okay. Good boy. All right. So I'm going to have you do it this time. I'm going to have you stand over there so you're ready. Okay. <laughs> Lacey may have the reaction <laughs> first. We'll see. <laughs> yep. And down. Take him away. Down. Yep. And ask him to lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Good boy. Down. Down. Good. Down. Yep. Step on the leash if you have to. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Yes. Yep. Stay, Stay down. down. Yep. Stay down. down. Yep. And we're going to wait until he sort of looks at you and pays a little less attention to me. You've got the goodies. That's why he's looking at you. Yep. Hey, sweet. So is he still pulling? Can you feel pressure with your foot? Um, well, it's still tight. Okay, so you don't need to pat him. Just stand up and let's just wait for him to relax a little bit. So I want him to adjust his, adjust so that you don't feel like you're having to hold him down with your foot. You know what I mean? So it's not just mm -hmm. put him in a down, stand there for a second. I want him to just, I want him to relax and breathe a minute and then you can uh, let him get back up. So what's interesting is the treatment for this, for the, the dogs exhibit similar behaviors. Okay, there's a knock at the door, they both bark, they both run to the door. Yeah. You would not do to Lacey what I'm asking you to do for him because she's totally fearful. Yeah. And he is not. So it's different. Okay. Okay, so I don't want you to put a leash and collar on her and start to do this because okay. she's she's dying to get away from whatever it is that scares her. She's moving away from us, she's running around in circles all the time. So we can we can talk about what that will be in a minute. Okay. And and we'll have to take him out of the picture completely because it's gonna involve a lot of food and I don't want to have to have a dog fight. <laughs> which will make make everything even more interesting. <laughs> yeah. You can get up now. Good boy. That's a good boy. Are you gonna get up? <laughs> Says no. So there's some treats right there. We just give him a couple while he's lying down. If he gets up, just put him back in the bag. There you go. What a good boy. Good. So, you know, a little bit of training with Stormy will help. Um, it's bound to help because he's so smart and he's looking for a job. And, yeah. and if you can provide him again with that job. Okay. 
we are going to, you're not going to let them practice this behavior. So when you can, when you know that at certain times of the day that's going to be a problem, he needs to be somewhere else doing something else. Okay? And we'll talk about what some of those things might be. And that might also give Lacey a little bit of a break from the whole thing that's going on. There was uh, one time I knew somebody was coming uh, to the door. Mm -hmm. I put both the dogs in here and I cl closed these two doors. Mm -hmm. I love houses with doors. Mm -hmm. And I heard her start the yelping right, because he because was, he going, was after going after her. her. Yep. Yeah, so they'll have to be separate. I mean, they can't. That's why I was wondering about the crate. Because the other option for a dog with this kind of behavior that's, that's confident and outgoing, he's not afraid, is that when he's at the window barking, you, can, you will give a warning. It could be too bad, enough, stop. And then you would march him using the leash to his crate and crate him. So if you can rent one or borrow one, that, that is a very powerful punishment. And usually when I say punishment, they think, oh, you're going to beat my dog. It's, no, it's not. You know, we send kids to their room because they're being right. obnoxious. So what you're doing is you're taking him away from everything that he wants, the window, the person coming in, the, all the action and activity. You're going to say, enough, too bad, and you're going to crate him for about five or ten minutes. Oh. And then he'll come back out. It's very neutral. You don't pat him. You don't sing to him, nothing. Just march him back to wherever the crate is. Ten minutes, as long as he's calm in the crate, he comes back out. He starts back at the window. You're going to say the, whatever the word is. You have, to, you have to tell him it's going to happen. You have to give him that warning of enough, march him back to the crate. An Australian shepherd like this, I would, I would be surprised if you had to do it more than three or four times. Oh, wow. You might see him start at the window, and you say enough, and he might come away on his own. You might see what I, sell, what I call like a self-correction, where he starts and then goes, oh, that's right, I'm not supposed to do that, and then try to come away. You might see him start to have some of that self-control that we're looking for, because right now he has no self-control. He sees it, he wants it, he barks, he tries to get it. You know, it's all, it's all good for him. And you're still lying down. <laughs> That's pretty good, Stormy. Are we tiring you out already? Stormy, the four-year-old Australian Shepherd, has five different behavior problems. Today we are only working on one of them. Some of the issues that Stormy has is primarily he's redirecting to Lacey when he gets frustrated at the windows. He has possession resource guarding from Judy, which means if Stormy gets something that he's not supposed to have and Judy tries to take it away, Stormy gets aggressive with her. Stormy also seems to get aggressive with Lacey. If Lacey has a chew item and Stormy wants that one, he's jumped over baby gates and just gone in and taken it away. And there's a potential fight there happening once Lacey decides she doesn't want to deal with that anymore. Being an Australian Shepherd, Stormy is also enjoying chasing the cats, which isn't a problem for Stormy, but clearly it's a problem for Judy. So there's a lot of different issues going on in this house with these two dogs. The number one issue that Judy called about was the redirection to Lacey, because she's heard Lacey yip as if uh, Stormy has actually bitten her. And as you can see, as we've seen today, Lacey runs up the stairs to bark out the windows to try to avoid getting the redirection from Stormy. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Judy has indicated that she wishes to keep Stormy. And so the goal is to work at the issues one at a time until each one has been modified and changed and Stormy no longer does that. Does that. One of the primary problems with Stormy being an Australian Shepherd, which is a herding breed, is that he needs a job to do and he doesn't have a job to do, so he's finding all sorts of other jobs which are causing problems in the house. Judy has a lot of work to do with both dogs, and she's gonna have to work with them one at a time to get each dog's confidence built up and to change those behaviors. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week for another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. If you have a doggy dilemma, maybe Denise can help. Visit www.denisemazzola.com for more information. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer tested through the Association of Pet Dog Trainers. The association requires recertification every three years with a minimum of 30 hours of continuing education. She has been training dogs and working with families for over 20 years.